Hello, good evening. Oh, welcome to this, the latest in a series of um, Being the Head and, uh, and a little bit of introduction to, to Wembley. Our focus this evening is around children's transition uh, through their school life and, and as well between schools. Um, I've said repeatedly that our mission is the formation of children, of which education is only a part. Now, of course, I, mean, well, I should say, of course, uh, you know, we are academically successful and there are a myriad ways that we deploy expertise and pedagogy to develop uh, the skills and our position in the top 1% of schools at A-level. The added value that we bring to bear on every child is evidenced in their results and last year's cohort achieved uh, at least a grade above what standardized scores predicted. But we've never ever lost the connection with just developing the individual child at whatever age he or she arrives at Embley. Um, we have a hugely accomplished pastoral system that sees us as a very warm and welcoming community where people have their feet on the ground and, and newcomers join and find their feet quite quickly. I suspect you know that it was never more needed than at this point. Um, I have some concerns, I'm sure that you do, about the well-being of children and have concerns about the effect the current situation is having on, on children and how they actually make sense of the world. I think it behoves us to understand that as children get older, as teenagers, they're not always as forthcoming as they used to be. When they were smaller in many ways they're much more difficult to manage and to relate to because they want very much to cope and to be in control and to to look after themselves and be grown up and so forth but they're dealing with a situation which kind of kicks against the sort of linear expectation that you know bad things go away things get better and that the getting better is a straight line and certainly not what we're seeing in recent days um, and that does have an effect and it's not always very, very obvious, but we put a number of things in place at Emily to get those conversations going and the conversations we're starting to have with children now about the pupil profile, about developing areas of themselves, about taking control of the things that are within their control, um, about looking at how they develop themselves in the context that we're in, how they're feeling and how they can, uh, can engage with, with that in a meaningful way. Mrs Goody will, will talk to you more about that and the same way she will talk to you about the parenting program that we introduce because when you when you join Emily it's a family that joins another family an extended family um, it isn't just that your child transitions from one phase of their education to the other from one school to Emily but that you come on that journey with your family um, and, and with the, our focus is also develop your understanding and, and how you're engaging with your child's development. So some of the work that Mrs Goody will share with you shares what we're doing to help you along with that. But I suspect that's probably enough for me for now. Um, and without further ado, I, I think we're going to go across and um, Shana, our head of prep, is going to take us through some ideas around transition and what it might mean for some of the younger children. Fantastic. OK, thank you very much, Cliff. Um, good evening. Uh, my name's Shana Wright. I'm head of Embley Prep uh, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, transition into prep um, and preparing for your child's next adventure. So starting a new school or indeed a new class is an exciting adventure for the whole family. Uh, as a parent, you're as invested as your child is in their success uh, and the success of their transition. In fact, often even more so. You want to plan a future which gives them the best possible chance to thrive and develop their full potential. And as a school, we pride ourselves on settling our pupils into Embley from day one. Establishing the right conditions for learning is perhaps the most important aspect of a happy school. From two years old all the way through. A sense of belonging is key. At Embley, we prioritise the happiness and well-being of our children above all else. After all, happy children thrive. I can have the next slide, please. There's a real sense of community here at Embley, and a large part of that is having a clearly defined ethos and identity as a whole school from nursery right the way through to sick form. We're invested as a community in developing our young people to be ambitious, have belief in themselves and to be compassionate members of our society. 
These core foundations help our families understand the great value of the school they're joining, whether they're joining our MB community at two years old, 10, 14 or 16. As a parent, from the moment you register an interest, we're there with you. We want you to feel as comfortable and confident as your children do, from help filling in paperwork to answering the many questions we know you'll have. It's a big step and an important decision. So we're as keen as you are that you make it the right one. If I could have the next slide, please. Children join Embley, Embley Prep at different stages in their education. It's something we're well equipped to support um, your children with. So nursery, there was a, there's a, a natural transition to reception and children have transition visits for story time um, and curriculum and play-based activities uh, throughout the summer term. Miss Steinbrecher, our reception teacher, also visits our nursery children. Um, we have a welcome evening for parents to meet myself, nursery and reception teachers, so you get to know the whole team ahead of joining the school. But it's not unusual for children to join across the year groups or mid-academic year. And in fact, just yesterday, we had a new starter in year two who happily skipped in um, this morning and had a chat with me for his second day uh, and went in to play with his new pals. Equally, children join in years three to six too, and the Embley way quickly becomes a way of life in your child's educational journey. We make sure that this change is seamless and well, as seamless as possible. Um, and when you sort of register that interest, I'm always happy to meet new families and give personal tours of Embley Prep um, and particularly enjoy an in-depth inquisition from prospective pupils. Uh, there was a particularly intense yet enjoyable one recently, uh, which felt a bit like an episode of The Apprentice. Uh, but I did have the good fortune to meet a, a young lady who I, I think might be the next host of Question Time. Um, but I'm pleased to say that we got her seal of approval and she'll be joining with her family in the new year. When the time comes to join Embley, the children are usually then raring to go. So all children are greeted by me at the main entrance in the morning and form teachers are on hand, particularly in those early days, to help and support you and your child. New children are given buddies and soon settle in. Teachers are always happy to give you a call should you need reassurance and they'll see their classes off and be on hand at the end of the day. If I could have the next slide, please. It's important to have current context also and to know what the transition would look like should your child join Embley soon and in the current climate. Embley has been putting in place its digital strategy over a number of years, which is where we were able to switch to remote learning straight away when requ required earlier in the year. An immediate switch to remote learning is something we're able to do from reception. We have a robust and, and thorough risk assessment in place, which is reviewed regularly in line with guidance. But should we need to remotely teach a year group or multiple classes, we're able to do this instantly. All children have their own iPad, which is used to enhance their learning. In PrEP specifically, all children have access to an online library. Reception to Year 2 have Big Cat, a digital library from Collins, which ties in with both um, our synthetic phonics programme and reading scheme. Years 3 to 6 use Myon, an accelerated reader, and that gives them access to 6,000 titles and also allows them to take a quiz after each book, uh, which then feeds back to the teacher. So that feedback um, shows if the children have understood uh, the text and if the reading um, level that they're at that is, is appropriate and has, has that level of challenge for them. Um, it then suggests a range of appropriate future titles. Children also use on their, on their iPads uh, Spelling Shed, which is a beehive based and fun spelling programme and a Times Tables app called TT Rockstars. And this has a Tables Super League for wannabe uh, Tables Rockstars. Uh, we also have teams to deliver lessons and Spark Jar as an online learning platform. This is to set work, share resources and feedback to the children. Our digital strategy enables us to use the very best approaches and resources in educational technology, both at home and at school. If I could have the next slide, please. Another vital part of that transition to a new school is a broad offering. This should be a continuation of the journey from one school to the next. This breadth, breadth comes in three key ways, a broad and balanced curriculum with specialist teaching, a varied co-curricular program and trips and residentials. Just some of the key aspects of our prep curriculum are that science is included as a core subject with English and maths. We have, have a wealth of specialist teaching 
um, as a through school, um, including DT from year one with senior staff in a specific uh, design technology um, classroom, French music and PE from nursery, and Spanish art and drama further up the school. We have a varied co-curricular programme, which builds through from reception to year six and then again through into senior school uh, and in prep includes pottery club, football, tennis, yoga, hockey, gym, drama and a wealth of other opportunities. We continue to prioritise education experiences and have replaced trips with Embley activity afternoons this half term. Um, and full activity days and in some cases activity weeks. So year six have um, an Amazon rainforest week, year five Victorian school for the day, year four will travel to ancient Egypt, uh, year three um, will learn about the Stone Age and build um, Stonehenge out of biscuits uh, just as one of their activities. Uh, reception year one and two will have a great fire of London day um, and do all sorts of fabulous activities making a clay candle holder, weaving, quill writing, bread making and gold foil fire insurance wall plaque making. Um, and this half term we will also host a whole school big draw. Um, we also aim to be outside as much as we can to explore the grounds, uh, taking in the natural environment, working with natural materials, going on nature walks and collecting and exploring amongst the 130 acres that we call home. If I could have the next slide, please. So from two years old, we aim for our children to, um, to aim for the stars, uh, build their sense of self-belief and belief in others and to start to recognise that they are part of something bigger, a wider community and a diverse world. And this focus runs right the way through the entire school. We all have so much to learn from our very youngest pupils and work hard to build and cultivate that sense of awe and wonder right through prep and beyond. The Embley adventure is certainly an exciting one, which our families very much enjoy. Thank you very much. I'd now like to hand over to Leah Goody, Assistant Head Pastoral in Senior School, who will talk to you about transition to senior school. Thank you. Good evening everyone, I'm Leah Goody, I'm the Assistant Head Pastoral and the Designated Safeguarding Lead. Um, of course, pastoral care is at the very heart of what we do here at Embley. Our small tutor groups in all years allow tutors to really get to know their pupils individually and their families too, of course, creating a really strong home school pupil relationship. The pastoral team in the senior school is comprised of the tutor, the head of section in years uh, for year seven, years eight and nine together, 10 and 11 together and 12 and 13 together, the heads of boarding, matrons and the school counsellor. And we all work really closely together. It is our priority to ensure the happiness, well-being and safety of all our pupils so that they can really thrive here at Emily. Tutors and indeed all members of staff help our pupils to become the best versions of themselves so that they can realise their academic potential and have confidence and belief in themselves and compassion for everyone around them. We are here for all pupils and you as parents or carers and tutors are pupils and your first port of call for queries or concerns. Of course, wellbeing is a hugely important aspect of pastoral care. We cover wellbeing in the curriculum, uh, in PSHE lessons, during tutor time, uh, and year seven pupils undertake a series of emotional literacy workshops with the school counsellor, and the sixth form also spend time looking at mental health during their enrichment sessions. But we encourage pupils to attend to their wellbeing in the wider school life, of course, too, through PE and games and through our co-curricular offering. And at the very heart of pupil happiness and wellbeing, we feel is a sense of belonging. Pupils at Embley develop this sense of belonging to our community by having the opportunity to really engage in a huge variety of different activities, uh, academic and co-curricular. And so when pupils join us, um, they embark on an adventure and they go out of their comfort zone and they challenge themselves and they go beyond what they may think are their limitations. And they have the opportunity to become the best versions of themselves and find a true sense of happiness and well-being. And underpinning this is the Embley Pupil Profile. So as a community, parents, staff and pupils have built the profile to describe the key characteristics of the Embley Pupil. Um, all pupils undertake activities within four key areas of mind, body, spirit and heart. And in doing so, so become authentic, knowledgeable, humble, reflective, principled, compassionate, open-minded, risk-takers, thinkers and collaborators. 
We also have themed weeks such as anti-bullying week and wellbeing week, which sometimes involve pupils being off timetable to take part in workshops and listen to, to guest speakers. Recently, we have had talks on mental health, managing the pressures of life, online safety, sleep and resilience, to name but a few. And this is extended to our parents and carers too in a bespoke series of talks to help you find out more about how to support your child through the different stages of their academic and emotional development. We bring in specialists from various domains to lead workshop sessions covering topics which we feel are currently most relevant to our pupils and to you. And this programme expands, will continue to expand and evolve over the coming terms and years with the aim that you feel genuinely supported through some of the challenging issues may, you may face with your children. Could I have the next slide, please? And the next one. Thank you. So a key part of pastoral care is looking after our newest pupils as they move to their new school. This really starts on the pupils first taste a day and normally pupils would get to see the school in action and to meet some of the other pupils who will be in their year group. For pupils joining us in year seven and nine, we would normally have a dedicated taste a day in the autumn and welcome day in the summer. Of course, this year we are running things slightly differently, uh, whilst ensuring that despite the fact that we are, aren't able to be together in school, pupils and parents have all the information that they need. We will be in regular contact with you once you have registered with us and we will host a series of events to give you and your child a taste of the school. And this will include a pupil panel answering some of your burning questions and that will be coming soon. Before our new pupils join us, we buddy them up with an existing pupil and encourage them to get in contact with each other over the holidays. And boarders will also have a boarding buddy as well as a day school buddy. Heads of section and tutors are in contact over the summer term and into the holidays to begin to establish those all important relationships with you. The first day of term in September is the induction day and this is for all new pupils in all year groups. People spend time with their tutors um, and in year seven, nine and twelve with their tutor groups. Uh, on this day, parents also have the opportunity to meet with key members of staff and to start the dialogue and building the relationship either face to face or remotely as we've done this year. And on that first day, people spend time getting to know their peers, the school buildings, finding their way around the site, getting their iPad and their locker just for example. And in those first couple of weeks, in years uh, seven, uh, nine and sixth form, pupils have team building trips to really get them talking to different peers in their year group and to their pastoral staff. We feel this is an essential part of breaking the ice and helping everyone to really feel that they are part of our community. This year, team building is taking place in house. We also have a team of year 12 pupils who are our dedicated year group leaders and three year 13 transition prefects. They're allocated to a specific year group and get to know their groups really well, accompanying them on the team building trips and being an ally among the people body, looking out for them, helping, to them, helping them to plan social and events and acting as a confident if necessary. Tutors will of course be in contact with you very early on in the first term to let you know how things are going. And we hold the Meet the Tutor event within the first few weeks of the autumn term so that you can meet your child's tutor and discuss their first few weeks in their new school. And that's just the start. Now I'll hand over to Charlotte for the first of our questions. Thank you, Mrs Goody. Um, just to remind um, viewers that if they want to submit questions, they can do so. There's a little um, icon in the top right hand corner corner of the screens where you can submit questions. I do have a couple of questions which have been sent offline already um, and perhaps um, Miss Wright if I could start with you. So it's a question for all across the school but do pupils have buddies whatever year group they join? Yes they do and often they have more than one so um, children are very very keen to, to buddy up with, um, with, with new children and they're made to feel welcome fairly instantly so um, our young chap in year two who joined yesterday had had three buddies straight away and uh, ran straight towards them when he when he, he started uh, this morning uh, we had his second day this morning as well so and um, mrs goody perhaps the same question to you 
Yes, absolutely. So it really doesn't matter um, whether pupils start um, with us um, in at the beginning of the school year or whether they start with us halfway through the year or at any point, pupils will always be given a buddy. As I say, day pupils will have a day buddy, boarders will have two buddies, one in the boarding house and one in the day school. Um, and it's always our aim to connect those buddies to each other before the new pupil joins us so that they can get in contact and sometimes they've even been able to meet up, which we think is really important and those buddies will generally speaking be within the same tutor group so that they come across them a lot of times during the course of the day um, and we find this works really well. Wonderful thank you and just leading on from that Mrs Goody how long does a buddy system um, last for how long are the buddies usually assigned to a student? Yeah, great question. As long as needed, really. Um, and, and it's not something that we don't force it. Um, we choose our buddies really carefully and they are fantastic. Um, and um, we, we choose them carefully because we know that those are the pupils that are really going to go out of their way to look after these uh, our new pupils. Um, and what we find is often those buddies, um, are, you know, they're, they're friends forever. Um, but it's, it's natural, of course, that as a new pupil joins a school and they and they make friends with with more and more people, that their friendship groups might take them off in, in a different direction. And, and we allow that to happen naturally all the while the buddy being there, um, you know, if necessary. So it, it's an organic thing and, and, it, and it changes over time. OK, wonderful. Thank you. And to Mr Canning, another question we've had. Given your digital learning programme, how do you support pupils who join Embley, but maybe are a little behind due to some of the inconsistencies they might have experienced in their education during lockdown? Oh, oh that's, a, that's a really good question. We've encountered quite a bit of that uh, as students have come to us um, uh, from, uh, from different backgrounds and because they had dark continuity, there were gaps. Um, we, we, we occupy ourselves by doing a diagnostic before they arrive to establish where there might be gaps. We have provided reading lists and so forth over the summer holiday to prepare the way for hitting the ground in September. Where that hasn't been the case, we've run the diagnostic quickly on arrival um, and we have a programme of catch-up sessions, um, some of which will may involve a little bit of online work and then feedback with the teacher. Um, but we get to grips with that quite quickly. Um, I think it's a significant feature of the school. One of the, it's just one of the bugbears, I suppose, when you, you know, when, when it's working so well as people join, there is that lag sometimes with, with some children, but uh, the preparation we put in beforehand, you know, the reading list that we provide, uh, doing the diagnostic before the summer holidays, getting them skilled up over the summer period, and then hitting the ground running in September. But again, we do accept children who come mid-year and they come from a variety of backgrounds um, and equally parents who are transferring back because of work and so forth. And we run the same kind of diagnostic with those folks. Um, you know, a little bit of notice helps us, but even if we don't have much notice and the arrival back in the UK is, you know, uh, less, less than planned, um, we can still you know, hit the ground running with those kids quite quickly. Wonderful, thank you. I think that's the questions, all the questions that we've had for now. Um, so no, there's no more coming in. So um, Mr Canning, perhaps if you would you there's like just, to do a round up? Well, Charlotte, there's just one observation that I, I suppose I, I wanted to make, and there's one piece in the jigsaw puzzle that's that's missing. We, you know, we've, we've spoken a lot and quite rightly about the children and looking after them and having them feel that they belong. Um, but there, there is a buddy system that exists in the parents association that might actually suit many of you uh, out there thinking, well, where is the good butcher? How do I find a laundry? Or I've just moved into the area and where is good to go for a, a meal? All right, may not be the best example I just used there as we're all going into a, a lockdown, but I think the point is made. Um, and there's quite a supportive and warm and welcoming community amongst our parents. Um, it's also absolutely the case that I am a totally unapologetic opportunist. And if we see an opportunity for parents to be involved in something that contributes to the life of the children, uh, you can expect to have a tap on the shoulder and be involved in that too. So um, I, I think if, if, if there are no, um, no other... There is one more. There is one more. And perhaps leading from, from what you've just said. 
I've, I've just spotted it. Yeah. Um, so, so, so the question is, what do you do to help us if we feel nervous? So, I, I'm, I'm. It might be worth answering that from a parent and a pupil perspective because we're not quite sure who submitted it. Well, I, I wonder if it, if it isn't actually a, a parent who submitted that because you know students students come in a variety of guises. Some of them are absolutely gung ho and keen to to kind of jump in and get involved and so forth. Others a little bit more um, kind of quiet and maybe a little bit shy. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There's something just so beautiful about those who are just a little bit quieter about kind of mixing with the group. So the buddy system looks after that, the involvement with the tutor looks after that, the conversations that Miss Steinbrecher has with children before they arrive and the other prep school staff help with that. But to be fair, I, I, I think this question might be coming from a parent because you are starting a journey. And I said at the very outset, you know, it's, an, it's one family meeting another family and it's quite absolutely understandable, particularly with small children um, as they go off and they leave home and so forth, that that's that moment of Oh gosh, there's my little darling gone. Um, now that, to be fair, you know, I've I've had three girls myself. I I've, I've been there. I've been the dad who's who's uh, you know said goodbye at the school gate and so forth. Um, I have to say with Sarah, and she may not care for me telling this to the world and its mother. Sarah cried every single day she went to primary school, um, in one in one year group. But she knew that if she was doing that, she got to sit on the teacher's knee when it was story time. So it's utterly calculated. Uh, but I have to say, my poor wife, who was there for all of those mornings, did leave feeling, oh my God, what are we doing? That that feeling you have is entirely normal and perfectly, perfectly natural as a parent. You will feel nervous, uh, and that's just the end of it. Um, the group that gathers around you, the group at the gate, the group of teaching staff, the connection with the tutor, the fact that we are a warm and happy, welcoming place, the fact that we welcome questions like this, which is just so human and so warm and so ordinary and so profoundly, you know, all normal. Um, Emily's set up to deal with that. Um, but you can always come and talk to us. Even come and talk to me. Um, I do welcome uh, anybody who cares to pop in. There's always a slice of cake and a cup of tea. Um, socially distanced now, of course. But look, if, if, if that's it. Oh, hang on. Charlotte, was there one more? Or have we come to the end? We've we've come to the end of the questions now. Thank you. Very good. OK, um, look, guys, thank you very, very much um, for, for joining us. Uh, my thanks to my colleagues for putting this together. Um, fireworks are breaking out around me across the estate. I have no idea what people are celebrating at seven o'clock of an evening, but um, bless them. It's lovely to see people having some fun. Um, Look after yourselves, take care, and if there's anything that you need, if there's anything we can do, please be free to, to reach out to us. We look forward to seeing you very soon. For me and the team, bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.